Okay, so we're going to begin by looking at parsing for a very simple example of just um, strings representing the addition of a, of a couple of numbers or the multiplication of a couple of numbers. The basic idea in parsing that we're going to explore is viewing a parsing as a problem which starts with a string and returns something of type maybe the thing you're looking trying to build and a string. And the idea with this type is that if a parser fails, let's say you don't find the thing you're looking for in the string, you reuse nothing to represent that case. If you succeed, you find the thing you're looking for, then it's represented by the just, and the pair is the thing that you found, together with the rest of the string. Now, the rest of the string is useful because when we want to parse several things, we might want to first parse one thing in the string, followed by another thing. So we need to be able to grab the rest of the string in order to do the parsed, parse the rest of the input. So now if you imagine we're going to parse a, um, parsing a number, um, suppose we're parsing, a, um, so we have a string containing hopefully a number, some form, and we want to get the number out of it. Now if the string was, was exactly containing the digits of a number, then what we'd like to get out is just with the number and the empty string, there's nothing left. If the string is nothing at all, then we, then we fail. In other words, we return nothing. And if the string starts with a number, then continues with some other stuff, then we will get the number and then we'll get what's left in the string. Okay, so we'll start with specifically that case and let's look at some code. So in this code, we've imported a bunch of things that we're not going to use for this example. So um, we'll look at those later. So what we're using here, I've just given a shorthand for this type of converting strings into maybe a thing in a string. And we're going to use this little grammar here that we talked about in the lecture. Um, as a way of describing the things that we're looking for. So in this particular example, the only thing we're trying to parse is the addition of two numbers. Some number, then the plus symbol, then another number. And a number itself is just a digit followed by zero or more digits, where a digit is any of the characters from zero up to nine. So let's start by um, uh, building a parser for a single integer, as we had on that slide. And at the moment, this is just equals u, as in undefined. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the um, we're just going to use the split function, um, sorry, the span function. So span is a function which takes a predicate and a list and takes the first part of the list, everything that satisfies the predicate, and the rest of the list. So this is instead of using take while together with drop while. This combines them all in one function. So if we have the span of all the numbers uh, less than 10 from the list from 1 to 20, then we'll get the list of all the numbers less than 10, followed by the rest. And it's not a filter, because of course if you started with um, if you started with numbers bigger than 10 and then added onto that some small numbers, one, two, three, those will not appear in the uh, appear in the result. That only works on the front of the list. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the span of um, is digit s. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab all the, we're going to split this string into the first part of the string consisting of only digits and the rest of the string. Now we need to inspect that thing. So we're going to use a case analysis of that. We're going to inspect that because if we're going to if we're going to parse an integer from a string, we need at least one digit. So we're going to do pattern matching. So the, the span of this thing must be at least one digit on the front of a bunch of digits and the rest of the string. So if we have something of that shape, then we're good to go. Then we can return. We successfully parsed uh, something and with the rest of the string. And now what we need to do is to convert the digits themselves to an integer. Now if we know that we have at least one digit, then we can use the function read, because if we have at least one digit, then we will successfully be able to read an integer from that. If we didn't have a, if we started with some other odd thing, um, then we would actually get an exception. So read is not a function we want to use um, without, without exercising a lot of care. In this case, we make sure we have at least one digit, and that means we're guaranteed to successfully um, read at least one, one digit from the, from the string, um, because we only have digits. And if we, tried the, if we had the empty string, that would be uh, an exception. So we're going to use the read function on the digits that we found, and we know that that will succeed. If we didn't get something of this shape, either we've got an empty uh, number of digits here, uh, well, that's in fact the only other case. Um, we know that we there's no way we can generate a number from that string, so we fail with returning nothing. So now we have a little parser for an integer, which does as we as we hoped. If we um, want to use the num parser on the string one two three plus four five six, 
but I get rid of the type from the previous example. Don't need that. Um, let's reload that one. Then we um, we get the number one, two, three, not the string anymore, and the rest of the string. Okay, so now we're ready to define. Um, we've written a parser for a number. Let's now write a parser called, well, let's call it um, addition zero, because we're going to write an improved version of this in a minute once we look at library parsing stuff. So um, to parse an addition, what we're going to do is first parse a number. If we're successful, then we'll parse the plus symbol and try and parse another number, and then put the two results together, uh, add them together and deliver the result to deliver the final integer. So we're assuming it's exactly one number followed by a plus symbol followed by another number. There may be some other junk on the end, but we don't worry about that for now. So we're going to look for a number in S, and we'll do a case analysis on that. Because after we found one number, what is that going to look like? It's going to be just of some number n and the rest of the string. So what are we going to do now is in the rest of the string, we want to parse a single what we expect after we pass the number is to find a single plus character. So we actually can do that with a pattern match here. Um, we will write the plus. We expect to see the plus character followed by R. And then what we're going to do? Well, we're going to then apply the num parser to the rest because we expect to be able to get a number from this guy. And we need to do another case analysis on this guy. Now let me maybe it's good to start this over on the left to give myself room. So I'm going to write another case expression here. So in this case expression, I'm also hoping to get just of some number m and the new rest of the string. And in that case, I've succeeded. I've got just, I'm going to return the number that I got by adding together using normal addition m and n and the whatever jump that I had on the end. And if I didn't get a number, if I wasn't successful in getting a second number, and then it's nothing. And in that case, I can only return nothing. And I'm missing one more case, namely, what do I do um, when I didn't get a just and then a plus symbol? Well, then I can't parse two numbers. So as in the previous case, I have nothing. So that should, should be a little parser for two numbers uh, added together. Let's try it out. Let's try the addition function with a string containing a couple of numbers. And it successfully finds the numbers, adds them together, and there's no junk on the end of that particular one. But if I wrote some other junk here, it could be another multiplication, then we see we get we stop we go as far as the first the end of the second number. And it doesn't actually matter whether it makes sense or not. Um, that's what we'll get left. But if I start with something that's not a number, um, or it could be even something with brackets, then um, then I don't then I don't get a successful pass. OK, now we're going to extend that little grammar to include not only um, addition, but also multiplication. So I have a now category of a calculation, which is either addition or a multiplication. And the multiplication looks very similar to addition. So for now, I'll just cut and paste. And this is not really a very, um, very nice thing to do, but we'll see later. We'll, we'll do lots of generalizations. But we're going to do something very similar to this in order to implement multiplication. So for now, let's just imagine that we'll, we'll uh, Generalize that later, but the main thing I want to show is is not the um, case for multiplication, but in fact the case for the overall calculation. So the overall calculation can be either an addition or a multiplication. So the strategy here is that we start by trying to parse an addition, and if we fail, then we simply parse as a multiplication. So we case analysis on if we do the addition uh, parsing for s. If we fail, what does fail mean? It means we get nothing. In that case, we simply do a multiplication instead, which of course may also fail, um, in which case the whole thing fails. Otherwise, if we got an OK parse, it doesn't matter what it is, it's just of something or other, and that's what we return. So this is just a, um, a variable. So now what we have is we've seen a pattern where we do an alternative, it's either one thing or another. And here now we can do um, our calculation function, not call stack, but calculation, um, which we can apply to uh, either addition expressions or multiplication expressions, and they work more or less the same way.